But you see, the history of this business is you got one thing I'll guarantee you which you didn't know about. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things revealed in the mystery of Marilyn Monroe. The true things rarely get into circulation. Usually the false things. For this list, we'll be looking at the most shocking bombshells dropped in the Netflix documentary about the tragic and mysterious life of this late Hollywood icon. Which of these revelations surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Hollywood's Black Book One of the earliest revelations in the documentary confirms a sad, albeit assumed, fact about the inner workings of Hollywood, especially during its golden era. A major showbiz agent of the time, Al Rosen confesses that casting directors would hire actresses based on sex appeal. So every girl, you know, I'm talking about kids that were breaking in like Marilyn Monroe, you know, when they get started. All the casting directors, they would write in their black book who could be made. It's hardly a shocking truth, especially in the light of everything we've learned during the Me Too era. Still, it's heartbreaking to think about all those hopeful actresses who were objectified and exploited when they just wanted to create art. Right. Adventure, ambition, from the ends of the earth they come, waiting for the magic call. The documentary shows crowds of young women literally being measured, which tells you everything you need to know about how the business operated. You see, the business has changed since then. Today it's the buck. Right. It used to be sex. Remember that. Number 9. Her Struggles with Childbearing Apparently, there's nothing Marilyn Monroe wanted more than to be a mother. Was it your impression that when she was actually married, that she was pretty much of a good, faithful wife? She was. She really was. She wanted a baby. In fact, during Prince and the Showgirl, she said when it's over, she's going to go home and have a baby. Sadly, this was a joy she never got to experience, having suffered multiple miscarriages. According to photographer Milton Green, she was keen on having a child. And her friend Arthur James speculated on to what extent that was true. If you gave her a choice between children and stardom, it would have been children. Without question. Monroe reportedly told Danny Greenson, her psychiatrist's son, that she was at her happiest when she got pregnant during her marriage to Arthur Miller. This was around the time she was shooting Some Like It Hot. Sadly, Monroe ended up losing the baby, which was understandably thought to have affected her deeply. It seemed to me that the crises that are supposed to have occurred seem to have occurred because of her miscarriages. Am I on the wrong, on the wrong track with that? Everything connects in a person's life, particularly hers, you know. There are no reports suggesting that she tried again, and she and Miller got divorced in 1961. Number 8. Arthur Miller Breaks Her Heart Marilyn and playwright Arthur Miller were an unexpected Hollywood couple, yet it was clear that they were very much in love, and they soon married. He gave her a ring inscribed, Now is Forever. Marilyn wrote on the back of one of the wedding photographs, Hope, hope, hope. Shortly after, the newlyweds headed to London, where she was filming The Prince and the Showgirl. While there, Monroe came across a note Miller had written, expressing his disappointment in her. How he thought I was some kind of angel, but now he guessed he was wrong. He'd married a woman as flawed as his previous wife had been. Monroe seemed to really believe in this relationship, so naturally, she was shaken. While it didn't end their marriage, the incident didn't seem to be something they could bounce back from. Judging by the documentary, it started the downward spiral that would ultimately end in their separation years later. She thought he wanted to love her, but how could she be protected against love's tenderness or brutality? Number 7. A History of Mental Struggles the documentary briefly touches on Monroe's troubled youth. Her mother struggled with mental illness and was taken into care. So she was passed around between different foster homes and orphanages. You know, I was never used to being happy. So that wasn't something I was sort of counting on. The experience didn't leave her unscathed, with the documentary detailing her struggles with depression, paranoia, and addiction. These all seemingly stemmed from her chaotic and harrowing past. To make matters worse, men in her life often left her feeling used. She got depressed at times about how terrible she felt about herself. Her psychiatrist, Dr. Ralph Greenson, felt that she needed a family more than anything else. However, she refused to call herself an orphan. 
repeatedly describing herself as a waif instead. There's no doubt that her difficult childhood had a sizable impact on her adult life. Something so vulnerable, so, uh, something she felt really destroyed. Number 6. Her Turbulent Relationship with Joe DiMaggio In 1954, Marilyn and baseball champion Joe DiMaggio married after a couple of years of dating. The girl who starred in How to Marry a Millionaire giving another starring performance in How to Marry a Baseball Hero. But it was far from a picture-perfect Hollywood love story. DiMaggio had a mean, jealous streak and was reportedly rather possessive. He struggled with his wife's pin-up image and supposedly wasn't the biggest supporter of her career. According to the interview with Monroe's hairdresser, Gladys Witten, DiMaggio was enraged by the famous subway great scene from The Seven Year Itch. Beat her up a little bit. Huh. Marilyn said that she screamed and yelled for us, but we couldn't hear through those thick walls. She emerged the following day with bruises, which were simply covered up with makeup. About nine months after their nuptials, the couple separated. All I can say as her attorney is that this is what we would say with the conflict of careers. Number 5. Her Relationship with the Kennedy Brothers Monroe reportedly became romantically involved with JFK in the 1950s, long before anyone imagined he'd be president one day. Their paths crossed again years later at Peter Lawford's famous parties. She allegedly became intimate with both Kennedy brothers, although more so with Bobby. And Bobby lasts well into the presidency, right? That goes on? Yes, that's what she said on numerous occasions. Unfortunately, she got caught in the crossfire between her lover, who was also the Attorney General of the United States, and his nemesis, Teamsters union boss Jimmy Hoffa. Hoffa had Monroe spied on, shedding light on her private interactions with each brother. Eventually, the Kennedys cut ties with the star for speculated reasons we'll soon discuss. She was told directly never to call or contact again. To Rob, not to talk to Robert anymore. Robert or John. This was another big blow, leaving the actress utterly distraught. Her friend, Arthur James, believed this marked the beginning of the end. I get, I find varying accounts she was really on the downward path. Oh, I, I, th I thought she very definitely was on the downward path. Number 4. Private Investigator Fred Otash As we mentioned, Jimmy Hoffa had a vendetta against Robert Kennedy, who was the attorney general at the time. So he hired Fred Otash, one of the highest paid private investigators, who was known for digging up dirt on celebrities. There was nothing he wouldn't do for the right price. How do you justify invading people's privacy like that? Well, I feel this way. If you can see it or hear it, you're not invading any privacy. Unfortunately, it was Monroe who would pay in the end, though not in dollars. Otash wired up her house, Peter Lawford's Malibu home, and phone lines in order to uncover any juicy facts about the Kennedys. And there were four bugs all together installed out there. They were placed under carpets, in the chandeliers, and in ceiling fixtures. John Danoff, a PI who worked for Otash, detailed some of the conversations and other activities that were overheard. Eventually, they'd accumulated a collection of tapes detailing the most intimate moments of her relationship with both brothers. And went into the bedroom where there was another transmitter which picked up cuddly talk and taken off her clothes, the sex act in the bed. Number 3. The FBI File Shockingly, the FBI had a file on Marilyn Monroe. They knew she was tight with the most powerful men in America, but were concerned about her political persuasion. The subject line, Marilyn Monroe, SNC, for security matter, communist. This was during the Cold War when tensions were heightened, and the threat of nuclear war seemed pretty imminent. Her former husband, Arthur Miller, had communist ties, and the actress allegedly had plenty of friends who were known exiled communists. So, American intelligence was worried that she might share confidential information that would then be fed back to the enemy. During the trip to Mexico, Marilyn spent time with friends, known American communists and left-wingers. They've been kicked out of America. She told one of them, Fred Vanderbilt Field, of a talk she'd had with Bobby Kennedy about politics. Bobby Kennedy once visited a nuclear testing site after a rendezvous with the actress, which perfectly illustrates why the FBI was so concerned. It's also thought to be why the brothers eventually ceased contact. Kennedy's celebrity plaything 
a volatile creature running to her psychiatrist every day, chattering on the telephone to all and sundry, was absolutely the wrong woman to be on intimate terms with the president and the attorney general. Number two, the mysterious circumstances surrounding her death. On August 5, 1962, sometime after 3 a.m., Monroe's housekeeper and psychiatrist found the actress, who had taken too many sleeping pills, dead. At least, that's the story that was widely reported. Marilyn Monroe's death was just a huge event. Pages and pages and pages. However, this story is contested by Natalie Jacobs, the widow of Marilyn's PR manager, Arthur Jacobs. She revealed that she and her husband were at a concert when he was called away with news about Monroe at about 10.30 p.m. The important thing is that she stresses that this was well before midnight. I found corroboration for what Natalie Jacobs had told me. So how could such different timelines exist? Well, Anthony Summers' research painted a very different picture of that fateful night. Apparently, Monroe was found in a comatose state and died later in the ambulance on her way to the hospital. She was then returned to her home. But then, if it, it would have been between the two drivers and, and the other people who were involved. involved. I don't know who was involved. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Was it a political cover-up? It's widely accepted that Monroe took her own life, either accidentally or on purpose. But there have been multiple theories that suggest there was more going on. One of these links back to her relationship with the Kennedys. I had uh, heard on good authority that uh, the Saturday that uh, this happened, Bobby had come into town. Bobby was in town and supposedly left. And when I say I heard it, I heard it from a federal agent. Robert was supposedly in town prior to the fateful incident and may have visited her. They also apparently fought on the phone before her death. The most surprising part of all is that operatives were allegedly sent to quickly erase any evidence of her relationship with the Kennedy brothers. Oh, yeah, anyways, yeah, it happened. Right. I was there at the time when she died. There were some people there that normally wouldn't have been there. You mean bureau people? Yes. Are you aware how long afterwards they came on the scene? Immediate. Before anybody even realized what happened. Now, Summers doesn't suspect any foul play regarding her actual passing. However, he believes that the circumstances surrounding it were kept secret in order to protect the Kennedys. Ultimately, it's unlikely we'll ever know the entire truth. It's hard to know where to start if you don't start with the truth. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.